This video is a step-by-step -step guide on how to create a parquet table in AWS Google Catalog using Python with the AWS Data Wrangler library. As you can see, within my animal locations parquet folder, I have a bunch of subfolders that are partitions for dates for parquet files. And within each partition folder, we have parquet files here. So let's walk through how to create this table that references that data set in AWS Data Wrangler. So I'm in my Jupyter Notebook here, and the first step is to import AWS Data Wrangler library. So I've just imported that as WR. So there's only one function we need to write to create this glue catalog table, which is nice, and it's called the create parquet table function. Now there's a lot of optional parameters. I'm just going to cover the most common ones that you might come across and need to use. So the database parameter is the AWS glue database it's going to write to, and that can be found within the AWS glue catalog and under databases here. So I'm going to be writing to my default database here. Now, the second mandatory parameter is the table name. This is the name of the table you want to call it in the AWS Glue catalog. So this will appear under tables and their name will appear here. The third mandatory parameter is the path of your parquet data. So it has to start with S3 followed by your bucket and any objects under that bucket name. And the last and final mandatory parameter is the column types. So this parameter requires a dictionary of the name of your columns followed by the type that column is. And moving on to some of the optional parameters, we have partition types. And this is a dictionary of the partition name followed by the type the partition column is. Important to note, if you are using partitions, do not add that partition name column to the column types. Please make sure to put it into the partition type parameter. If you do add this to the column types, you might see two of the same columns appearing in your data set. If your data is compressed and you want to identify the compression type, that can be used with the compression parameter here. And I would say it's good practice to provide a table name. So if anyone is looking at the table, they would at least understand at a high level what the table is about. And then finally, we have column comments. So this is a dictionary of the column names followed by the description as a string of what the column is. And that's it for all the parameters. And what this returns, it returns nothing. So you're not going to get anything returned in Python if you attempt to print this. So I'm going to go and give this a run here. And if you don't get any error, that's good. That means your table has successfully written. So heading back to my AWS Glue console here, if I refresh my table, you're going to see that now my new table has written. And if I click on it, you're going to see here all that information I passed to my function now appears in my table. Now that we have our table with the correct metadata associated with it, now we can actually query it in AWS Athena. So now if you refresh the data source on your database, you might see that table appearing now, which is great. Now, if your table in AWS Glue had a partition like mine, there's an extra step you're going to have to do for it to successfully query in AWS Athena. I made a separate video walkthrough on how to do this. So check out the description below to find this video. So I hope you found this video helpful and you now know how to create a parquet table in AWS Glue catalog with Python. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe if you learned something and you want to learn more about data integration with me. See you next time.